Where to start with this one? Where to start? I think you have to look at Arsenal. And they're under they're under a certain amount of pressure. And the pressure that Arsenal are under is, of course, Liverpool and City in this title race of Laurentless. Laurentless? Laurentless. Why doesn't that sound word? Why doesn't that word sound right? Relentless. That's why I said it wrong, right? I just couldn't say it right in my head. And they've been there and they've done it. They've worn the t-shirt. You've got the best team in the world. You've got a very good team in Liverpool. The two best managers currently in the world. And you're going up against that still with an inexperienced squad of manager in comparison. So there's pressure there. Arsenal also have a huge amount of games coming up from the beginning of April. So two down already, right up until the end. Plus there is an abundance of rivals who are screaming, fighting, praying, demanding that Arsenal collapse at this point. They're two games into April. They haven't collapsed as of yet. There are no signs. They, it could still happen, of course, but there isn't a singular sign right now that this, that this Arsenal team is going to fall away from this title race as of now. They look unbeatable in the Premier League at this particular moment. I don't think any can be, anybody can deny that. In 2024, in the Premier League, this Arsenal team has been impeccable. They're getting an abundance of clean sheets. And again today, a few decent efforts. A really good save from Raya from about sort of 20, 30, 25, 30 minutes into the game. But that was a speculative effort from far. Brighton, who tear through most teams, yes, they countered well at times, but they just could not penetrate the back line of Arsenal. This Arsenal team's form at the moment, they look almost perfect. They look almost perfect at this particular moment in time indeed. And they're doing that in the backdrop of so much pressure with one of the greatest English teams of all time in Manchester City chasing them down. A relentless, terrifying force in Liverpool, plus with rivals from all and sundry preying on their demise. And I think that shows a great deal of mental, mental fortitude and strength that Arteta has built within this team. Now, what you have on top of this is individuals that perform. And I know he's had a lot of stick this week. And I thought that Bukayo Saka stepped up impeccably well tonight. He was very creative. It, a great bit of skill early on. Had a shot at the far corner. Should have scored. There was two or three times he cut the ball back into the right area. But I don't think the movement from the attackers was where it should be. And then when Arsenal win their penalty, he steps up. He delivers. He makes himself account. You know, he, he hold, takes accountability, scores. And some people try and take his penalties away as he now hits, I believe it's 30. That's 30 GA for the entire season in all competitions. And some people want to take that away from Saka. But Chelsea fans don't take Carl Palmer's away. City fans don't take Haaland's away. I don't remove Bruno Fernandez's penalties. So why would I ever do that to Bukayo Saka? And I think the most important element for him today is getting off that pitch with 20 odd minutes to go and getting more rest in those legs. Didn't play against Luton off early tonight. And that is the element of Arsenal that was so perfect. They could remove people from the field of play. Now, the penalty is going to, we're going to go on to a couple of other players in a minute. The penalty itself is going to get attention. There's no doubt about it whatsoever. I don't know what I should did there. Did there sorry. The penalty is going to get attention. And I understand why some people would say it's not a penalty. The player doesn't win the ball because he doesn't maintain possession, but he does certainly get a touch on the ball first. Lamptey goes in, touches the ball, and then he follows through and clears out Gabriel Jesus. Terry, what's your opinion? What do you think of it? I must have had about 20 DMs already. Well, my view is simple. Doku touched the ball when he challenged Alexis McAllister. And I didn't buy into this nonsense from Howard Webb that just because he touched the ball slightly, that it makes it not a foul. A few weeks ago, Man United played Man City. We were through one-on-one -on, -one on goal. Garnacho was there. The huge slide tackle from Edison. He wins the ball, but clears out the player. I said it was a foul. I thought it was a, a mistake. So I'm staying consistent to my view that just because you touch a ball, just because you maybe even win it. If your tackle is reckless and if your tackle is reckless and dangerous, it doesn't matter if you win the ball. If you get a minimal touch on it and you still clear the player out, it is still a foul, in my opinion. So looking at the Doku example compared to tonight, the difference being where on the body the foul has taken place. 
but the logic remains the same for me. Yes, there was a minuscule touch first, but not enough to win the ball. If Gabriel Jesus wasn't taken out, he would have then got onto the ball in the box with an opportunity to square it or shoot. So it is a foul, in my opinion. I'm just remaining consistent. So if you're a Liverpool fan and you thought Doku was, was a foul, even though he touched the ball first, and now you're saying this isn't, I need to understand why you think it's different. Maybe you think it's dangerous playing the other one, but I'm saying consistent to what I've said all year. Just because you win the ball doesn't make it not a foul, especially with the law that, that you know, whether you're in danger opponent or whether it's a minuscule touch, just one little touch isn't enough for me. And there was far more contact on this than we've seen in other penalties given this week, especially the ones um, at Stamford Bridge a few days ago. So I thought it definitely was a, a, a penalty. I understand the challenge around it, though. And then you move on to two other players that I want to really shout out today. Yes, the defense is going to get loads of credit. Yes, the defense is going to get loads of support and 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 praise, etc. But I want to shout out Odegaard to begin with. Another game where I thought he was just a leader, just a captain. He's press, the way he organizes the team back into shape, his ability to trap back. He didn't assist any of the goals today, but he was just involved in all of the brilliant attacking plays from Arsenal and another top performance from him in a high pressure game. City winning first, chance to go top, he stands up. Remember, this is in the title race now. Everything you do in these 10 games, I'm using 10 games as the barometer because that's what most people say the title race is, but people in this title race period, every goal, every game, Every performance is worth two, three, four, five of an of an, uh, any other point in the campaign because the pressure is on like you could not believe. And finally, I wanted to talk about Kai Havertz, aka twenty nine. He has now scored nine Premier League goals, I believe. Looking at the stats here, that's his highest ever Premier League goal scoring season. He has got nine GA in his last nine appearances. And it wasn't just the goals today. It wasn't just that beautiful pass to Trossard. It was his overarching play. He was a thorn in the side of Brighton for the entire 90 minutes. And this man has rejuvenated. This man is having a renaissance. This man has come to Arsenal. And I made a prediction in the summer. I said that one of Mason Mount or Kai Havertz was going to deliver. And at the moment, Things can change, but at the moment, it's Kai Havertz. Now, that doesn't mean Chelsea fans are going to regret the decision for their club to get rid of him, but they, 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 they may very well regret him going to Arsenal, a local rival, if what he's doing now continues. Because it isn't just GA that he's popping up with here and there. It's the overarching performance and operating in a couple of positions. In terms of his goal tonight, look, some will say it's a tap him. You all know, and this is, again, I get called an Arsenal simp for saying these things, but here comes the consistency bomb for you. I defend Haaland against the tag tapping merchant because there is no such thing. The movement, the spatial awareness and anticipation required to find the space to be able to score tappings is a very finite and rare commodity. Now, of course, Haaland's the best in the world by a country mile at doing it. I'm not putting Kai Havertz into that bracket. But here comes my praise of Kai Havertz. I preempted it with a uh, with, with the truth bomb to stop the, the nonsense comments uh, coming in. The way the lazies run, drops his shoulder to the right and then runs to the left was beautiful. It was great play from the Arsenal midfield, ball into Jorginho, decent cutback. But it was that little stop, move to the right and then cut into the left. It sent the Brighton defenders. They didn't know where he was. There he is. And although it was three goals were scored, I do believe Kai Havertz was... Arguably the most important of the three. It enabled some early substitutions to be made. It kind of killed the game off um, as being really competitive in any way, shape or form. But I just sort of look at it and think to, to myself, Kai Havertz deserves so much credit. We talk about Declan Rice handling a £100 million signing. We talk about going to Anfield or going to Old Trafford and standing up and delivering. But Kai Havertz went to Arsenal under a huge cloud where I would say 80% of the Arsenal fan base were against it. I think the majority of rivals were laughing at it. The media were criticizing it. There were people that don't support Arsenal staying up till four o'clock in the morning, UK time, to watch him compete 
in a skills challenge in the MLS, and they were ripping into this guy. And his first two or three months, I felt he was being played too often. I felt that he was still suffering with the mental fatigue, stresses and everything else that came with being at, at Chelsea and kind of failing in the end, or that started well. How he has turned himself round, you have to credit it. He may never be your cup of tea. I don't think he's ever going to pass the eye test. I don't think he's ever going to be aesthetically pleasing. But he's starting to do what's so important for forward players, and that is impact games consistently, score goals, create opportunities, and win big points for Arsenal, or at the very least, be heavily influential. And we speak a lot on the football terrace about players and how important trophies are and who is influential in winning trophies. Kai Havertz, if Arsenal go on to win this Premier League, has played a key and integral role in probably winning you about nine points. Now, other players, in terms of in those games that he was a standout individual or had that clutch moment, and that for me is, 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 is a legacy builder. And I think that he deserves a tremendous amount of credit for how well he has done and how 29, a.k.a. King Kai, as I can see you all calling him, or Cobra Kai, I can see you all calling him in the comments. He, he deserves that shout out because I just think he has been nothing short this season of, of not, not he's been exceptional all season, but his growth and his development and his renaissance, as I say, has been absolutely impeccable. I round this up before I go to the Super Chats by saying this title race is on. My favourites are still Liverpool. I haven't changed my mind about that. But everybody predicting Arsenal to fall off at the beginning of April, you're wrong. They're now going to go more towards mid-April if it's going to happen. That can has been somewhat kicked again. But the question I want to pose to you and I want your thoughts and I want your feelings, does this Arsenal team look like it's going to collapse or fall away in the Premier League at any moment? Let me know your thoughts below. Make sure you hit the like button. Make sure you are subscribing to the Football Terrace as well. Now, there's got to 